What's up guys, welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards 4x4. By the end of this video, we should be, if it all goes as planned, four wheeling with the three speed automatic transmission. So stick around. If you guys have not already watched the first two videos of this automatic transmission swap saga, you can click up here. I'll have the video videos linked up there for you or go back and watch those. If you're interested in swapping a 32 RH or an automatic into a five speed uh, Jeep Wrangler, I go over all the parts, go over everything and really find details of everything that you're gonna need to do it. And the swap did work. The transmission worked as far as the swap part. The transmission itself is what didn't actually fully work. So I only had first gear and reverse. So I did drive it around, drove it around the neighborhood, and uh, but only in first gear. I went through the diagnostics process. I had good fluid pressure. My buddy, who I used to work with at uh, GM at the dealership, he went on after I left and is now a master automatic transmission tech, ASC certified, GM master certified, all that stuff. So he came over and we went through the whole transmission, looked at everything, tested a bunch of stuff, and basically came to the same conclusion that neither of us knew what the problem was. Basically, it seems to everything coming back to the Transgo TF3 shift kit that I installed in the valve body. Like I said, we didn't see anything necessarily wrong with it, but obviously there is no fluid getting through the passages in the correct way to that front servo when I shift it into second gear. So in order to just totally eliminate that issue. I found a place that makes basically race car valve bodies, Cope Racing Transmissions. He makes custom valve bodies for the A904, and people use these transmissions, a different version of this, basically same internal, same everything, in drag cars. So he makes a A904 drag car reverse manual, fully uh, built valve body that's custom made, and it's only like, 320 bucks. So I didn't want to do that, uh, but I'm at that point where, you know, I'm just gonna have to throw money at it until it works. And the only reason I can do that is because of you guys. You guys subscribing, you guys commenting, liking, watching the videos, watching the ads, buying stuff with our coupon codes, all of that helps uh, the channel and actually makes us money that I can do these projects like this. So this is a great example of something I wouldn't afford, be able to afford without you guys. So let's go over the parts that I'm gonna be replacing and then we'll just do a quick time lapse of me rebuilding this transmission and then we will go from there. So this is the modified valve body that I did. Um, this side and this is the Cope Racing Transmissions valve body. It is custom separator plate here and really awesome cool aluminum uh, plate, back plate. Uh, let's go over some of the things that I can see visually that are different. Let's start on this side. Um, all of these holes here, passages, boom, gone. So there's only one hole right here. This plate right here is totally gone on this one and is just a block off plate. So here, there's a whole section here with a bunch of valves and springs and stuff. Totally gone on that one. This is gone, not there, right here. And uh, let's see what else. This, this part of the valve body doesn't even exist on mine, actually. I don't have that in this area. Uh, so these are slightly different, but it is gonna bolt up, and it does bolt up perfectly on my case. So these don't look totally different. Um, it's not that big of a difference on that side here. But the other thing, one of the big things is you don't have adjustable pressure. There would be some valves right here where the TV cable would adjust the pressure and it is all blocked off and it is set at 150 PSI. He also has a race car, actual drag car valve body that's exactly the same as this, except he has it set at 200 PSI. So here is the one on the factory valve body with the right here. We got the valving right here for the pressure totally gone on the other one. So let's flip it over here. The TF3, the Transgo shift kit, 
I had to drill out a bunch of holes and all these plates and stuff that's super weird. So here is the backside. CRT22X is what this one is. And this is the old one right here. Just way cleaner and nicer. The other thing that I picked up was the band strut. So this is the one that came with it. See how thin it is. This is the new one. It's more than twice as thick. And what that is with the higher pressure that this is going to be running now, this goes in here and applies the band. These things bend all the time. So that's one of the failures is bending this. So I went ahead and bought this. It was, I think, 20 or 30 bucks. I can't remember exactly. And it also comes with uh, new O-rings for your accumulator. But I have a brand new billet accumulator that already has upgraded O-rings in it. So I probably won't need those. Another thing that I did is this valve body is a reverse manual valve body, which is another advantage over this because this was not a reverse. It was a manual valve body, but this is a reverse manual valve body. So I can now run a rock crawler uh, plate in my shifter, which I can just swap out this plate and it should be good to go after I make all my adjustments, making sure it's good. But you can see here, first gear is all the way down here. And first to reverse is that far. And with this new shift plate, first to reverse are right next to each other. I just need to grab all of the parts and pieces out of the bags that I put them in, pull everything out, reassemble the transmission, and then it should be ready to bolt into the Jeep. I now have the transmission fully bolted up to the engine, torque converter's in, the shifter is in, the shift linkage is in, everything is in up to the point where I need to plumb this. Now, since I already blew the budget, you know, with the uh, valve body and all the other parts I had to get to get it to work, um, I decided to throw away this uh, cooler line setup that I had before, super sketchy. The more I thought about it, the more I didn't like it. It's just basically barbs, hose clamps, and this uh, kind of press fit, uh, clamping, brass fitting I didn't like for my temperature gauge sensor. I uh, just didn't like it. So I went ahead and went to Speedway Motors and picked up the Dash 6 AN transmission cooler line kit. So this is 166 bucks, comes with a lot of stuff. This is the fittings that bolt into the transmission. And this is the new ones, ICT, billet, made in USA. And they have O-rings on it. Those things are gonna replace these so I can now run AN fittings. Came with four straight, two 45s and two 90s, 20 feet of hose, some Earl's Performance, uh, hose separators separately i bought this guy right here which is going to be my temperature sensor uh, holder and then i bought this one this one is an edelbrock just basically inline fitting uh, that was like six or seven bucks to add on to it as well so all of this all together was about 200 bucks after tax and buying the sensor i think it's worth it in the long run to go with uh, good quality parts and I didn't go with Amazon like $70 Amazon special that's literally like the same kit for the most part because I heard a lot of horror stories about them leaking and having issues with the hose and uh, other things so I decided to spend the money and get the legit stuff 
and not go cheap on it. This one right here, I will swap out for a, a, uh, a temperature switch to control uh, the cooling fan. Be super easy, just unbolt this and swap out for the thermostat switch that will turn the fan on and off and control it. I have the hose on here. I'm gonna run two hose clamps on it. It's routed right here in between the radiator and the grill. And it's gonna go right here and probably in here somewhere I'll cut it and install my AN fitting. And the front one here ended up being 45 is gonna be the good fit. So 90 back here, 45 up here. Now that I know what I'm gonna use for these two, I will start building the lines. Got everything plumbed and tightened down now. The temperature sensor I'm running in the outlet of the cooler. So it's gonna go into the cooler and I wanna monitor how efficient the cooler is working. And if it's not working enough without the fan, I can add in the switch into this one here and I can have the fan turn on automatically instead of manually with a switch, which is how I'm gonna wire it up. So now we're underneath. The hoses are coming down through here. I have a heat shield wrap on them. One fitting right here. I got another one right here. And uh, that's how it's plumbed up. And uh, I'm just gonna attach a couple things down here and put the skid plate on and we should be ready for fluid and firing it up. Okay guys, so we got it totally together. Got it running, I got the fluid topped off. And let's go ahead and run it through the gears. First, neutral, someone's calling me, first gear, with our low band apply, engine braking, second, we have second, we have third. Slow down for first. So it looks like everything is actually working perfectly. So I'm gonna go take it for a test trip around the neighborhood. Well, test drive did not go as planned. Uh, on the jack stands, it seemed okay. First gear, perfect. Third gear, perfect. Reverse, perfect. Everything perfect except second gear. Doesn't have flipping second gear. So it's now the next day. And uh, well, let me explain a little bit what I was doing. So it did have second gear, but it was slipping. So I could feel it engaging. The RPMs would drop a little bit, but it just wasn't quite there. So what it did was I drove it around, didn't like it, started slipping real bad like you give it gas and RPMs would just go all the way up. So went straight back home, parked it, and I decided to just readjust the bands just to be sure. So I loosened up the adjuster for the bands and it felt really, really loose. Like I could tighten it in way farther than I feel like I should. So I tightened it up a little bit to 72 inch pounds, backed it off two turns again, tightened it up, drove it around, just didn't make it very far and it was still slipping really bad so i immediately turned around just using first gear only and came right back to the shop and left it like that last night so today i came home from work and i pulled the pan off pulled the valve body off pulled it apart and i will show you what i found all right guys now we are uh, underneath the jeep here there's a problem right there so when i adjusted it that second time apparently it was off of its track and had moved over and bent this little tab over 
and then w I made it worse by readjusting the band. So I'm going to do some research. I'm going to pull that out, bend this all back, and uh, then put it back together and then see how I feel about it. As you can see right here, what I came up with was I took a 3 16 piece of plate, I ground this band down a little bit to create a flat spot where it was all mangled up and kind of bent this one back, this little tab back, and it's still kind of bent forward and I'm not really, don't really like it all that much still, but um, basically I just welded this 3 16 piece in here and reinforced this anchor side of the band. So very important here is you have to remove the transmission because this band will not come out without removing the transmission. So, and this thing is full of transmission fluid and it is combustible at like 400 degrees and welding is definitely hotter than 100, 400 degrees. So if you got a piece of slag or something that flies off and lands in the transmission fluid, you're going to have yourself a, uh, a burned down Jeep or whatever. So very important, remove the transmission, remove this band before you do any grinding or welding on any of this stuff, because I don't want you to, uh, burn your house down, burn your Jeep down. Or anything like that so I have it all back installed and uh, it's still like I said before this tab because it was bent it's still not super great and it's a little bit of an angle I wish I would have kind of made sure it was a little bit more flat uh, but I think this is gonna hold and be way stronger than it was before anyways and it should be good to go so I'm going to Put the valve body back on put the pan back on put the fluid back in it and we will test it out again and also while i'm down here in case you're wondering i adjusted my front band to 72 inch pounds and then backed it off two turns and my rear band i tightened it to 72 inch pounds and then i backed it off three turns so the uh cope racing transmissions instructions say back this off two turns the factory service manual says four turns and my transgo shift kit, which is what I originally was using in this says like three and a half turns. So I kind of split the difference and went three turns uh, with my rear band. And this is going to be what gives you your engine braking when you're in first gear. So I kind of want that a little bit tighter. I don't want it super loose, but I also don't don't want it to drag. So I kind of went, split the difference. Two seemed a little tight and four seems a little loose. So I kind of went in the middle with three. Okay guys, now that I have things pretty much wrapped up, hopefully for the last time, this thing has been quite an ordeal, taking it for a test drive. Um, so this thing is a little bit weird because it is an automatic, but like a manual, I have to shift it. So it doesn't shift on its own, like I've always explained. So it is a little bit strange to have to still shift it. So this is definitely not gonna be for everyone. The shifts are very, very harsh. The drivability on the street is not so great, um, but it's fine. Like I'm second and uh, I'm okay with it because I don't spend a whole lot of time on the road. So the most time I really spend on the road is like when I was in Moab, I drove it a lot on the road. Uh, but here at home, 99% of the time, I'm not driving it on the road that much. taking some getting used to because it's only a three speed and the last one was a five speed so obviously the gears are a lot different the way it's geared so in between shifts you have to rev it out a little bit more and uh so it, it drives different because of the gearing for sure and i can see driving on the freeway with no overdrive no torque converter lockup is uh the rpms are going to be screaming a little bit more than i had hoped so we got one it definitely 
pops into that gear for sure. And going down to one, you can feel that engine braking. It just pulls you forward. So that's good, that's what I want. Pop into second. Second seems to be working really well still. Okay guys, this video ended up a lot longer than I expected because I had more issues than I expected. So there will be no four wheeling in this video. I wanna drive this thing around for like a week. I wanna make sure that it's actually good to go because I'm gonna to have to lengthen and shorten my drive lines an inch and a half accordingly and got to get my temperature gauge all wired in and a couple other things I got to button up after I make sure that everything is good to go because I don't want to do all that and then have to get my drive lines rebuilt again to go back so that would not be uh, good so the next video of this will be just a four-wheeling video and how I like four-wheeling with automatic and how well it does on the rocks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think about a race car transmission in my Jeep Wrangler. If you wanna check me out on social media, I am at MuddyBeards4x4. Check out our website, MuddyBeards4x4.com. Buy shirts, stickers, whatnot. And uh, until next time, we'll see you on the trail. Rage on that beat, gon' pray.